Hi everyone, and welcome to our next brown bag session. I'm your host Alec, and if you're new here, we conduct such sessions twice a month on Tuesdays, and we also have many other interesting activities at our community, and we are kind of a think space of blockchain professionals, of blockchain enthusiasts who are interested in this technology, in this concept of this technology, and who also aim to accelerate its early adoption. And uh, to learn more about our other events and activities, just check out our social media pages and visit our website. And today we will be talking about blockchain in real estate together with our colleague Sergey Belausov and uh, Daniel Simpson will be helping us with uh, facilitation and with the uh, moderation of questions at the end. And if you want to ask a question, just type them uh, in the live chat on YouTube and we will read them aloud at the end of our today's session. So I will now invite Sergey and Daniel to say a couple of welcoming words. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Alec, thank you for, for the warm welcoming. Yeah, I'm good, I'm ready to the nice conversation today. Perfect. So let's check if we can see your screen. I hope now it works. Okay, then uh, we will be backstage together with Daniel and uh, right after your presentation, we will be back uh, to continue with the questions and answers. So good luck, Sergey. Thank you. So, okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for participating in our session today. And as you know, we today will be discussing the blockchain and how the technology can be used uh, in the real estate domain. We will discuss the reality some kind of, and also we try to focus on some potential with this technology uh, in the future. Okay, and this is kind of our agenda. We will start from the blockchain overview. Uh, then we will go to the real estate market. Um, next, we will discuss the real example, example implemented in Georgia. Georgia, it is a country. It's not a state in the United States. Uh, next, uh, we will discuss what is the potential uh, of the blockchain in real estate. And uh, last, not, uh, not least, uh, benefits and pitfalls for the real estate market. Yep, and uh, it will be very beneficial, I believe, for uh, all of us to start from the like blockchain basis, blockchain overview, just to, uh, I believe, understand more deeper how this technology can influence the real estate market. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, okay, I believe... Uh, if we are trying to describe the technology in two words, uh, we can use decentralization plus cryptography. So all this technology, uh, I believe, exists uh, long years ago um, before blockchain was invented by Satoshi. But in the 2008, Satoshi combined these two technology in some uh, way, which opens a great potential for business and for for the whole society i believe uh, and uh, let's uh, try to think about blockchain characteristics uh, so first of all uh, we already know like the traditional approach and traditional approach with the uh, traditional databases which was highly adopted by companies in web uh, 2.0 uh, like facebook uh, google and, and other companies and in this approach uh, you know that um, we have the all the data for, for example all your sh shares all your posts all your personal data in the facebook uh, stored by the company in the company's uh, databases and you do not uh, own this data in contrast with this when we're talking about the blockchain for example bitcoin blockchain uh, all the data stored uh, in each node so each node has a copy of the database yeah so in this case we it's it's kind of decentralization decentralized databases and uh, of course uh, uh, here we have a situation when we don't have any point, one point of failure and you own the data this is one of the key characteristics next uh, is uh, 
kind of immutable chain of records. When you when we start go in deeper into database of the blockchain, uh, the good way of thinking of it it's ju just of chain of blocks. Uh, each block ha has the hash of the data stored in the into the block. This hash, and in addition to this hash, each block ha has the previous block hash as well. So, and this uh, allows us create the concept when you cannot uh, change uh, the data in block because if you change one block, all the next blocks will be changed as well because you has, we have this link with hashes. And because of this, uh, we, we have some kind of military level of security. And um, the proof of this can be a Bitcoin. It was invented in 2008 and for, until now, it was no one successful cyber attack to the system. So it's it's very, very resistant. Um, next, uh, to maintain the system, we need some kind of rules to, to be implemented. And uh, in the blockchain, we have uh, some consensus mechanism. And what is the consensus mechanism? It's just a way uh, to create consensus how we will be updating the database. Uh, it, in some kind of way to create trust. And uh, in case of blockchain, blockchain uh, in case of Bitcoin, Bitcoin use like, like of proof of work, a consensus mechanism. Uh, we can think about it like uh, several nodes compete to each other to accomplish a complex mathematical operation. And when, uh, if first node uh, successfully accomplish it, uh, this node, uh, give uh, to this node we give right to add new block to the blockchain and based on this based on the amount of energy this uh, node spent to solve the problem we can trust uh, trust this node and this data which was added to the to the database um, and uh, as you can imagine all this previous things we discussed with you uh, allows us to remove intermediaries so, for example, in case of blockchain, in case of Bitcoin, we do not need uh, banks itself because all this uh, infrastructure maintaining by, by the node itself. We do not need uh, like someone to open a, an account. We do not need someone to maintain transactions. We do not need someone, uh, some third party to maintain security. So all this will be done by these nodes in the system. It's great. Uh, and uh, other characteristic of the blockchain is uh, that we, we have some kind of public blockchains. It, it, it's like a Bitcoin. You can participate in the, in the system and anyone can participate. Um, and we also have some kind of permission blockchains. For example, it's a Ripple, uh, which was widely adopted by banks. And to participate in this system, you need some kind of permission from the administrator. Uh, of course, when, it's, when we're thinking, thinking about the blockchain, uh, digital currency, uh, the first thing we started thinking about it. And uh, then also the smart contracts, it's another thing which, which uh, you used in the blockchain. And by the help of Ethereum, now we can program smart contracts and put it inside the block. And of course, NFT and uh, some kind of security tokens, which allows uh, digitalize uh, re real world assets and create a new market. Um, okay, this was some kind of prerequisite to starting discussion, um, our real estate topic. And um, now let's start to go deeper to, to the real estate market. And first of all, of course, it's very important to realize uh, the potential of the market from the capital perspective. It's one of the biggest uh, market in the world. To provide like clear evidence to this, you can think about it like only uh, uh, if we if we will talk about gold ever mined uh, in in the world, it's it's just a four percent. Of, of all the all the uh, global property market you know it's it's a big market with big amount of uh, entities um, approximately 
400,000 developers operate in this market in the world. So it's a huge market. And uh, if you want uh, anyone who will increase, uh, I believe, efficiency of this market uh, will benefit from it, definitely. Um, okay. Net, next, uh, despite the fact it's one of the in, one of the most interesting um, market for investment and for creating wealth, uh, we have uh, some challenges and problems on this market. And let's uh, start to think about these problems. Uh, first, it's very difficult to uh, have difficulty of transactions and uh, transferring ownership. In this market and for example in some countries from the beginning when a seller goes to uh, the real estate agent and uh, tell that he wants to sell property to the end when new owner when a uh, new owner becomes a true owner it means that in the government system uh, some kind of records appears and uh, you know all this stuff it can be up to four even six months so it's a very, very long process in some countries. Um, it's first problem. The next problem is transactional cost because in the process of uh, buying, selling property, uh, lots of middlemen we have now. And uh, approximately 4 or 5%, it can be 4 or 5% from the total price of, of an asset, price of the transactions. Uh, next, uh, we have lack of transparency. So. When you buy property, uh, you sometimes don't have clear understanding what who was the like the past owner uh, of this ownership. Does this ownership has a mortgage, etc. So lots of these details sometimes can be missed, and because of this, it opens uh, the doors to to the fraud, corruption, etc. And uh, I believe the last but not least uh, is. Uh, inaccessibility so most of uh, most people uh, in the world are excluded from investment to real estate especially if we're talking about uh, commercial real estate market uh, it's very very high barrier to starting investment so you need uh, you need to have some amount of money to do it um, okay uh, i believe this kind of problems and um, let's start go, go deeper to the land registries problems uh, because we will talk about the real case in this field. Uh, so we have some transparency and fraud issues. And if we talk about some statistic, um, more than 70% of the population now lack legally registered land. Um, and only one third of countries worldwide digitally tracked uh, proper property ownership. And all this can put a strain on legal system of the countries. And the clear evidence here, if we're talking about India, uh, in India, land-related disputes account for two-thirds of all pending court cases. So it's a huge, huge problem. Um, okay, and blockchain here to help us to solve some of the problems in the market. And let's start to think about the real examples, which we have. Um, and when you first start, start thinking about blockchain and real estate, when you start digging uh, digging into this topic using Google, etc., I believe first uh, case uh, which can appear, it's a Georgian case of public registry of property ownership, which was um, done in 2060 by the development company which called Boot Fury and the Georgian government. Uh, and this case were, had, a, uh, I believe, very good media coverage. Lots of uh, very famous newspapers write about it uh, and uh, promote Georgia as the first, one of the first country which implemented uh, blockchain in the public sector. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, and now let's start to think, uh, let's start, uh, let, let's uh, go deeper to the technology itself, how, how it was implemented in Georgia by, by Bitfury. Uh, you can imagine that uh, the Bitfury um, created 
the permissioned blockchain uh, database for, for NARP, which is National Agency of Public Registry, and uh, some kind integrated integrated this uh, permissioned blockchain with the existing uh, government uh, database. And in addition to this, they, by using anchoring, periodically public uh, the information in the permission on blockchain to the Bitcoin blockchain, just to provide additional level of security and for, for the data integrity uh, purpose. And uh, let's show another diagram here. As you can see below, it's a land registry database with some kind of documents of ownership. Then um, it's, it's, it was like transferred to the hashes and public to the permissioned blockchain in the uh, uh, on the government side and periodically they public public root hash to the bitcoin blockchain and uh, this create some level of additional security to prove uh, to prove ownership for for the citizen and uh, let's try to think about real example let's imagine that uh, buyer uh, and seller who is owner agree on all the conditions so all the price etc and they uh, and uh, buyer decided to buy seller apartment and after this they they come to the house of justice uh, in the house of justice uh, they sign all the documents uh, about the deal then after a document was signed, um, House of Justice create a record and publish digital certificate of ownership. In addition to this, House of Justice create hash of the document, of this digital document, and publish it into blockchain. And then um, transfer the digital certificate along with the hash to the new owner. And in this case, new owner able to prove ownership by referring to the hash stored in the blockchain whenever is needed. So it's kind of um, overall uh, business process here. Uh, okay, and let's start thinking about what is the main advantages for Georgia uh, by implementing this technology. So first of all, of course, security to the data. So the data cannot be corrupted. Uh, first, uh, second, um, quick proof of integrity, of uh, of data integrity, of property rights for citizen, uh, and uh, of course some kind of real time auditing capabilities. Uh, auditor able to audit the registry not once per year, but even each ten minutes. And uh, of course, this case promote Georgia as a country with innovative technology in the public sector. Um, Okay, now we uh, knew this case. Uh, we understand how the blockchain can be implemented for the land registry case. But let's start uh, thinking about how blockchain, what additional features of the blockchain can be implemented here and how, how we can enhance the process, what additional things we can have. Uh, first of all, of course, it's a smart contract, um, I believe. And what is a smart contract? Uh, it's a, just a digital version of a contract which is stored inside of a blockchain. So all the rules written in the code as a code. Uh, and smart, can, smart contract uh, remove, uh, uh, pro provide a, a opportunity for removing intermediaries, removing third parties, because like this, all the rules executed by court, all the business process executed by court. Um, and you can think about it like a vending machine, you know, uh, when you um, provide some input, for example, you put some money to the vending machine and uh, it's get you some output, for example, bottle of water or some kind of cookies, I don't know, because uh, you fulfill some rules uh, and you put right amount of money, then you get some input. And in this case, in, in case of Georgia, let's start about, let's start thinking about Georgia. 
we we if we implement a smart contract now we do not need go and sign contracts in the house of justice potentially it can it can be done uh, without this step and so it's it's reduced a huge amount of operations in, in in this process and in this case the court will be dictate uh, dictated how the process will go and the computer court will be the law in this case okay uh, smart contracts in addition to smart contracts uh, we um, can think about tokenization tokenization of the property and real estate tokenization uh, we just can convert the value of the real estate into tokens stored in the blockchain enabling fractional ownership of a property uh, like these divisible tokens each present a fractional share of of ownership um, and uh, let's start thinking about real example um, or or not real maybe future example let's imagine that uh, in front of your office you have a coffee shop and uh, you sometimes drink coffee in this coffee shop and um, you start to realize that it's a very profitable business profitable place because it's a very tasty coffee lots of customers nice nice environment inside this uh, coffee shop and uh, you decided to be an investor you can if this property is tokenized you can you can buy 0.00 percent of this of this um commercial property and become an owner it's worked like this uh, so and uh, let's go deeper uh, and let's start start thinking about digital decentralized applications here um, decentralized application it's like a simple application like a traditional application but um, behind the scene we have the database and smart contracts uh, which work on, blo on the blockchain and in this case for example in case of georgia they can create some uh, dap which will allow uh, them uh, citizen to open this up uh, seller buyer i don't know maybe bank as a, as a stakeholder and they can do all these processes just using the digital uh, just using dap so it's another opportunity which can which can be implemented here and uh, okay let's um, maybe I, I will provide you additional uh, schema additional diagram and here you can see we 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 uh, have a smart contract which was published, I don't know, by government or, or maybe by some some uh, company, and which maintains this process. Then we have um, the, the owner of the property decided to tokenize the property. Uh, we go through the process. We tokenize the property, and now the price of the property will be 100 CH1. It's like some kind of name of the token. 100 ch1 is the price of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, property but here owner decided to sell part of this um, of this asset to another investors and uh, uh, by logic of the smart contract uh, shareholders other investors can purchase some part of this uh, uh, property and in this case initial owner uh, has 60 is sh1 and other investors has another part of this of this ownership um, and here is a like new balance of this asset we have four investors here and when we uh, go deeper let's start thinking about they decided to uh, rent apartment and and a tenant who will pay for the for the rent for example, it can be one hundred thousand uh, ether, Ethereum, and uh, when the tenant paid to by using smart contract, uh, smart contract rules understand that first we need to pay taxes to the government. So twenty ether goes to the government, uh, 
and remaining part divided between owners based on information which is stored in the smart contract, based on proportion of ownership. Uh, it's work like this, it's work automatically. And uh, in the future, for example, when they decided to sell this apartment, uh, it can be additional rules in the smart contract and all the um, money can be divided between all owners. Uh, okay, and this kind of uh, maybe some of proof of concept, which was done by one of the Sweden company, um, how the technical architecture <laughs> can uh, high, high level look like. Uh, you can see we have some user interface. It can be interface for, for the buyer, for seller, for bank, for agent, even, uh, even, uh, even administrative inter interface. We have some uh, application uh, contract logic. We have uh, file storage when all, all the documents can be stored. We have some system for which uh, here for proving authenticity and uh, digital signature. Uh, we have blockchain database itself uh, and land registry database itself. And here how the system can potentially look like from the architecture perspective. OK, uh, let's start. Uh, let's start thinking about benefits uh, which real estate can can get from implementing the blockchain. We have uh, some ma main stakeholders here. First uh, is owners and developers uh, of the property. And for them, it's, of course, new source of liquidity uh, because we can use cryptocurrency, we can use very quick payments, etc. And of course, it's a wide pool of an international maybe investors and uh, also domestic one who just uh, don't have any barriers. Now uh, you can invest uh, not so, like little amount to buy some percent of of uh, of, uh, of uh, real estate. And uh, deals can be closed faster and securely, of course. For investors and buyers here, we also have faster and more transparent transactions. We have some uh, legal rights which are protected by military level of security. Uh, we have lost cost fee by removing uh, middlemen. And of course, we decrease uh, barriers to real estate investments. And for the government party, here we have transparency on all levels of the process. We have, uh, we're providing opportunity to save time and money on for decreasing bureaucracy level, uh, decreasing corruption, and attracting new capital to the market, to the country, and improving business environment as well. So I believe all this is a huge benefit for the market, for all the stakeholders. And uh, OK, uh, this was benefits. This were benefits. Now, now let's talk about pitfalls, what we have, what some kind problems for implementation we have now first uh, of all it's some kind of legal challenges because now not many countries in the world have appropriate legal environment for example to tokenize the real estate it can be some problems during the process and now we have uh, some countries only only some uh, which which allows uh, and which have the appropriate envir environment for example united states uk uh, switzerland etc it's it's not a long list um, then another pitfall another um, challenge here is a uh, uh, government sometimes have internal barriers and concerns for example, losing jobs from citizens when we decreasing uh, level of bureaucracy can be kind of problem for government. And I know some one case uh, in the Middle East uh, when government decided to to like deny the project because they realize these same things. Uh, next uh, uh, is like a blockchain adoption and like lack of knowledge about the technology because in the business and in the government sector people uh, often do not clearly realize uh, the potential of the blockchain what is the technology is about and because of this uh, they can also deny uh, some projects and uh, of course now we're on the beginning on the beginning of revolution maybe and because of this only several successful projects in the market 
now exist, uh, which attract only early adopters, and we are in the beginning. So all this can be some kind of pitfalls uh, in, in our way. But uh, I believe uh, now you can cl clearly realize um, the potential of the blockchain in real estate and how this technology can um, disrupt the real estate market. Um, and I hope you also realized it. And I, I believe in the future of blockchain in the real estate. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm ready to your question. I'm ready to discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey, so much for your great presentation. And we see a bunch of questions in the live chat. And Daniel also has started to reply some of them. And let's start right from the beginning. Daniel, do you would you like to maybe read some questions aloud, uh, those you didn't answer? Um, yeah, but perhaps we can put some uh, we could put Olga's first question up on screen, Alec, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just a um, second. If that's possible. Could you please uh, start re reading the question and I will yeah, try to find sure. it. Out. Yeah, so, so Olga's asking, uh, she said, uh, hi colleagues, thanks for the talk. Uh, my question is, how do companies perform cost benefit analysis to understand if blockchain is a viable solution for their business? So um, she said it was, uh, she, she meant that as a general question, but perhaps also in the context of, of real estate. Mm -hmm. To try and answer that one there. It's okay. Um, so from the cost benefit uh, perspective, you I can refer to the real example case in Sweden, when uh, to prove all the all these ideas, they created proof of concept project. They involve some um, uh, some some stakeholders. They involve government, and they created some kind of MVP solution to promote uh, promote the idea and how it can can decrease. Uh, I don't know, operational cost, etc. So the one of the solution is just to create MVP by help of uh, interested stakeholders. And then by real results, you can measure uh, what we have in the reality and how the, how, how the blockchain solution can potentially bring in, in other opportunities. Daniel, what do you think? Yeah, it's a it's it's a good it's a good question, and I think it's it's quite tricky for um, for companies to think about uh, cost benefit analysis in me in many cases because um, the technology is is rather is rather new. I think that companies in general are looking at this at a kind of long term potential use and, and looking at it as you know long term innovation technology. Um, for example, EPAM is involved with a, a couple of clothes. Uh, uh, brand clients um, to look at innovation of, uh, of things like metaverse and NFT. So, you know, those things are being driven by, you know, innovation and kind of uh, long-term marketing and how to engage um, uh, especially young people in, in this space. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's kind of about long-term innovation rather than kind of, you know, looking at uh, you know, cheaper ways of doing things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Olga has another question, actually, with the, she said, with a huge environmental impact of proof of work, uh, how is this being justified by the companies adopting um, the uh, how is this being justified, excuse me, by the companies adopting the technology and communicated to the public? Mm 
it's a good question um from my perspective uh proof of work is just the one of the consensus mechanism uh, which in reality yes it's true um potentially can have a huge envir environmental impact but for example proof of stake which um ethereum starting to use uh, does not have this problem daniel what do you think yeah, I'd agree with that. And actually, there's another comment in the chat, um, a reply to Olga saying there are uh, saying pretty much what you said there, um, Sergey, that there are more efficient consensus algorithms like proof of stake uh, and proof of space. Um, Olga a bit further down says, uh, yes, she understands. But in this particular example, for example, it's proof of work. It's still being used. Um, so maybe I think, yeah, because you mentioned proof of work at the beginning specifically, but I think what you're saying is that the obviously this is just a, a like a theoretical example i guess yeah mm -hmm. and also i think the the example in georgia um that you mentioned if i'm not mistaken is is using a, a private blockchain model yep. for for storing many of the um uh, the hash proofs right and i think from what you were saying in your presentation uh, bitcoin is used to kind of store a root hash but uh, a lot of the part of that system is actually using a private model right so correct right mm -hmm. yeah so so yeah so actually the the time when you publish to to, to bitcoin is really it's probably not that often so you wouldn't be um you wouldn't be kind of involving too much of the of the mining power to do that i would have thought so, yep yep okay let's just go down uh pick another one just trying not to miss any but uh, we can we can always go back um we've got one our token holders shareholders of a company that holds properties or do they own stake in one property alone? Uh, what do you but think, Daniel? Um, so I guess, yeah, to I mean, tokenization can be, you can have different models, right? So um, in a blockchain world, you, you wouldn't want fractional ownership to to uh to be ownership of shares in a company you would want uh you want you would probably want those to be uh a fractional ownership of the property itself um but i guess le legally it's hard to know what that means at the moment um you know if we as usual with blockchain projects um the legal aspect kind of comes sometimes into confrontation with the with the technology so um you know whether you i mean i guess you could set that up as a you know it, as having fractional ownership being uh, uh legally ownership partial ownership in a company but um i would say it would be more like a, a kind of a direct ownership of a of a property but i guess there's different models that could be used there mm -hmm. Would you agree with that, Sergey? Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got another one here. Um, I can't pronounce uh, his name, but um, how how do conflicts between shareholders? How will conflicts between shareholders will be solved? For example, if they have a key from the <laughs> if they have a key from the same flat and disturb each other, uh, like it was in the USSR in, in communal flats. So, how, yeah, how the conflicts between shareholders will be solved? I believe uh, one of the most ca common cases in this field is just investment purpose. So, you some when you buy these tokens, you do not expect. In, in most cases to live in this apartment, but you expect some earning in return. So I believe it's like a general case. But uh, in case we have, we, we expect some maybe uh, legal disputes, etc. Some of the rules can be written inside the smart contract. 
um, uh, and potentially it can solve some of problems which can occur in the future. Daniel, what do you think? Yeah, I'd agree. And, and yeah, the blockchain is not is not there really to solve uh, solve every single problem. Um, you know, the uh, a lot of kind of uh, parts of the ecosystem and the process. You know, there are still lots of other trust points. You know, like um, like was mentioned uh, there, where you know you you know you can't you can't directly control keys with blockchain but you might you might be able to do that in the future using um uh, using the technology but it's uh you know I, I heard an example the other day about supply chain and that uh you know blockchain is being used there quite widely as well um and then we had a question well what happens you know if, if someone puts the wrong label on the um on a product you know and you're tracking the wrong thing so um these are all valid questions i think um but specifically you know the, the the blockchain is only at the moment being used to control certain uh certain parts of that but uh, but yeah i think like you said in um in the future smart contracts might be able to um you know facilitate key access i suppose especially if it's uh if it's a software key on your phone um and there's a there's a key there which is um you know which is somehow represented by a token and in turn, you know that's uh, that's controlled within a smart contract. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't uh, you couldn't have that part uh, uh, to, to be made more secure in the future. So that if, say, for example, you know someone sells their token, um, which entitles them to part of a property, the smart contract could revoke uh, the key that corresponds with the physical key to their to their property so i guess that's a way that you could you could solve that problem for sure yeah mm -hmm. okay let's um let's move on um another question all this tokenization will increase the um prices of the whole property price because due to people's financial illiteracy and initial hype, they will consider that tokens are cheap. So I think that's, yeah, that's just talking about the, um, the kind of the, the initial price of, um, of tokens. Yeah, it's another opportunity for, 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 for the players in the market. Maybe the price will be a little bit higher. Yeah, it, it's, an, it's an interesting one because I guess that if you if you divide a, uh, a divide of uh, an ownership of a property between that between a hundred people, does that mean that um, you know the, the the price of individual tokens will go will be proportional to the price of the property as a whole, or do they? Yeah, do they somehow have? Uh, will they kind of take a effect of other? Um, kind of market forces and that may perhaps mm -hmm. that will manipulate the, the, the price the price as well but um yeah certainly a good investment vehicle though especially for people that um you know that don't have access to you know traditional financial products for example okay i'm just looking down just to alec can you see if i've missed anything just making sure we've answered everyone's questions. I think there are new new questions from Oria Turk and a couple of comments from Olga Yauda. <clears throat> uh, Olga's uh, yeah, Olga's got a good one there. So um, it's about the fourth one from the end. Um, Alec, maybe we can put that one up on the screen. Mm -hmm. There's an existing concept of shared ownership in the pre-blockchain world, so the solution must already exist. There's an existing concept of shared ownership in in the pre-blockchain world, so the so surely the solution must already exist. And a, and a smile. So again, any comments for that one? Uh, there is existing. <clears throat> 
yeah i don't have yeah i agree i agree with you uh daniel so so yeah i think um it's a it's a good point there's a, i guess with all of the, all of these concepts like um we already yeah we already do have you know an existing uh business solution for this i guess my opinion is it just makes it makes processes more efficient it makes uh it makes things more transparent um and potentially you know remove like you were saying in your um in your speech sergey you know it removes it potentially removes middlemen um in 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 mass in on mass um so you know the technology offers advantages to kind of many actors i think within this uh um within within the system and especially if you can if you can prove you know ownership of your property um uh, yourself without kind of using a third party or, or intermediary then that's uh you know that's a big benefit as well um and i guess there are yeah there are existing models of fractional ownership but i you know i think there's probably a lot of friction there um of how to you know of how to set that up i can't think of a can't think of a simple way here in the uk where you would uh you know you divide your property between you know a thousand people so that people have you know a thousand shares of something it's probably legally possible but uh, i'd imagine it's quite um uh, quite a messy process yep Okay, I think um, we still got time for a couple more questions, Alec. Yes, sure. Okay, let's go for uh, one from uh, Aurea. Um, she says, regarding the example of Georgia, in case of producing a digital certificate of a property uh, on the blockchain, what will happen to the ownership after the death of the owner? Yeah, I believe it's a good question. Um, frankly, I do not go so deeper um, and I I don't know how the system works in this case, but I can think that in the smart contract, we, we can have some kind of rules uh, which we can implement in case of some actions happen, what will happen with the right of the property and uh, this this action can be triggered um, based on the government maybe uh, some source of data which also can be uh, used in this case and if we legally registered uh, this uh, accident this smart contract can transfer rights to another owner for example to relative to relatives this is my uh, like some kind of uh, ideas how it can be done but i know i'm not sure even if it's implemented in, in the georgian case daniel what do you think yeah i th i think they don't um they don't control anything in in uh in such a granular way um it's it's more about just to, you know just proving uh proving current ownership and you still need you know especially in the georgian case um and others that I'm aware of, you still need, you know, like a government agency to, uh, you know, to be issuing certificates and revoking, um, uh, revoking things. And, and what the blockchain is actually doing is just like creating a uh, creating an audit trail um, and proving the uh, like integrity of that information. So you're still you're still very reliant on them. Um, uh, on, on, you know, third parties, you can't you can't get away from having a trusted party who who everyone agrees is the uh you know is the authority which says yes you own you know person a owns that doc owns that property um and we issue a a, a proof of ownership of that property you still need that trust point there so you can't um you can't uh, yeah you can't you can't do with that uh, uh without that but i think smart contracts will um you know, will ultimately be able to, you know, control a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff in the future. Okay. 
Okay, let's go to another question by Oria. Does government interference in issuing ownership certificates constitute a threat or loss of this advantage in that area? Could we put that one up, Alec, for a second? I think it's on the screen. Okay, I'm a, couple, I'm a second or two behind on my on my live stream. I see it now. Thank you. So, yeah, does the government in, in, does government interference in issuing ownership certificates constitute a threat or loss of this advantage in that uh, in that area? So, perhaps, uh, yeah, perhaps I could just give a thought to that one. So, it, it's kind of connected with what what I just said about. Um, you know, relying on on third parties. So, what the what DLT is doing in this case again is not it's not uh, replacing certain government authorities. It's it's um you know it's almost facilitating uh, helping individuals to you know prove ownership, um, help with fractional ownership. So you still have that trust point. So, you know, at the end of the day, if um you know if 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 this there's a problem with that first point where some, you know, there's an issue of a, a property deed to somebody. Uh, if there was a problem at that point, you can't really, um, you can't really get uh, get over that. But what you can do is once that record is on the blockchain, um, if there's if there's some interference by anyone um, uh, in the months and the years following that. Um, you then have a provable way of someone to um, to prove that they own a particular document, uh, excuse me, a particular piece of land or a property themselves um, using cryptographic proofs. So, you know, if you if you were then, you know, going to take that to a to a law court, you'll say, well, hang on a minute, you know, this is this is my this is my proof. It was issued to me legitimately uh, in the first place. Um, 15 years ago, and uh, and here's my proof. Um, so you, the, in that respect, you know, it it prevents um, bad actors from manipulating data in the meantime. You know, things like um, documents going missing, um, you know, title deeds changing hands to to, to someone who um, who it shouldn't have, um, and. Yeah, it gives individuals the kind of the the uh, what what they need to to prove that. So it does actually combat um, combat a lot of, a lot of uh, bad actors in the space for sure. Do you agree with that, Sergey? Yeah, I agree with this. Okay. Just having a look, um, I think we've covered everything. Olga just in uh, her last comment said, in the Georgia's real estate example, maybe it could be a part of the smart contract to include heirs. So yes, I agree with that, Olga. Perhaps if we've still got time, I can just um, ask one of my own to to you, Sergey. It's um, do you know in the in the example of Georgia, uh, is it is it actually possible for the for the individual to prove the integrity of their document on their own, or, or would they need to, to do it via a third party at all? Mm -hmm. I believe for now uh, they need some some kind of party to use the permission blockchain and proof that they are real owners if, if they want to refer to the block blockchain record. Now what they can do now it's just use the cadastral num number and open some kind of government agency site and uh, see just the data from the government databases who is the owner and all these transactions. But to prove uh, it using hash, they need uh, access uh, to the um, permission and blockchain. It's for now, but I saw some kind of roadmap uh, which they presented uh, and they're planning to, I believe, uh, develop 
some kind of application which will allow citizen to to access directly and to prove uh, ownership using cash in the future got yeah makes sense yeah and i th i think from my knowledge of um the estonian example which is the ksi blockchain i, I think they do actually issue the the document uh, uh hash to the individual as well so that i think they possibly can prove that on their own um but uh yeah i'm not 100 percent sure sure about that but that, i guess that would be a good step a good next step wouldn't it for what they're doing in georgia yep okay um and maybe just a, a final one again perhaps just my thinking is um yeah how long do you think it will take before we see the widespread blockchain use uh, for real estate especially in places like the uk and the usa do you think we're a long way off or or are we not as close as people think um i believe now we have some kind of real examples in the market fund for example united states based startup which is called honey bricks they allows uh, now open opportunity to the owners to tokenize some kind of real estate from one hand and from another hand investors can buy these uh, tokens and uh, and be a, a owner Th this kind of project starting to appear in the market uh, and I believe uh, during the five years we will see a bunch of another projects which will be populating this idea of blockchain in real estate world got you yeah makes sense okay I think um, that's a uh, Good questions, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for those. Um, Alec, I think it's back to you. Yes, uh, that was very productive, uh, guys, uh, especially the second part. And uh, thank you so much for answering those questions. Thank you, Sergey, for your great presentation. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, especially many thanks for bringing such a useful topic to our attention. And I think this will conclude our today's webinar. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.